Hey guys, I'm Jerry. I'm Sierra. We're ladies. And we tangent. <laughs> it's definitely dead now. <laughs> if oh, there God. was a spider. <laughs> oh my God. I forgot that you weren't pregnant anymore and I was like, be gentle. <laughs> That's scary. That's a spider bite for sure. It it could just be that you like picked an ingrown hair. I haven't touched my legs. <laughs> well, now you're going to hyper focus on it and I'm going to need you to not. Looks pretty bad though. <laughs> it doesn't look that bad. Okay. It's because you just freaking went at it with your fingernails. What's, What's up, up, everyone? Hello. Hello. How are we doing? What? Whoa, tell me. This is the week before our Moment House show. <gasps> what? For real? Yes. One week? Yes, from today <sighs> is our live show, our virtual live show. If you don't have tickets yet, momenthouse.com slash ladies and tangents. We are so excited. Oh, yes, and we, we have meet and greets this Thursday and Friday. <gasps> so if you were one of the <laughs> stressed very quick ones yes. to get a meet and greet, um, we're very excited to yes. meet you. I'm, don't worry if you have anxiety. I have anxiety about it too. We'll and just be anxious together. We kind of thought about that. And because we've seen some people who bought the meet and greets and they're like, I genuinely don't, don't know. know what <laughs> the fuck I'm going to say to you for three minutes. I might and just I'm be like panicking and staring and or smiling crying. at you. Yeah. Um, so we actually bought this card game mm -hmm. that we're going to play for the exclusive episode that comes out on Friday, but we figure we'll also have it handy at the meet and greets. Yeah. And so it's called, want, um, just play a little game. We're not really strangers. <laughs> I was like, we were strangers. <laughs> that's not, I think that's a movie. <laughs> Yeah, it's called We're Not Really Strangers. Yes. And we'll just like have an icebreaker card situation because everyone loves an icebreaker. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> Don't they? <laughs> anyway, you're going to hang up before the three minutes are up. You're going to be like, I'm going to eat this money because you guys suck. <laughs> hey, how much does a polar bear weigh? Enough wanna, to break the ice high up here. I don't want to <laughs> play with you. I don't want to play. That used to be my favorite thing to say to people at a bar, and then just walk away. Would you say that for sure? Just to see the look. Bar Sierra is a different beast. <laughs> she has no rules. <laughs> so I like to do things when I'm drunk. I'm very much like how I am with Corey when I'm drunk, mm. which is that I like to just um, do things to get a reaction out of people <laughs> and then leave. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> so and. We have another surprise. Mm -hmm. If you guys like Sierra's sweatshirt. Hey. <laughs> For those of you audio listeners, um, it says no spoons McGee and it's got spoons on it. Crisscross uh, feet. <laughs> yeah. And it's got little L and T's on the spoon. Yeah. It's really cute. Um, Jessica draws. Um, she did a couple sketches mm -hmm. and she tagged us in them on Instagram and we reached out to her and we're like, um, can we commission you for some of these? <laughs> we love these. Can we put these on t-shirts? Yeah. So uh, a few of her designs are going to be uh, available yes. and we are going to be launching some merch during the live show. Yes. So if you want to hear about more of the merch, it'll be out for everyone like after yeah. the live show, but yeah. we're, we're just, just launching it for the show. Yeah. We, we really appreciate everyone who is taking the time out of their day to hang out with us and spending their money on us. And yeah. so this is our way, like one of the ways we want to say thank you is just kind of like dropping it for those, those people first. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, giving them a little sneak peekies yeah. before it's actually out. Sneaky peekies. But it's something that, you know, we've been getting kind of harassed for, <laughs> for about a year now. Well, and that's <laughs> so. the problem too, is we have, taken so much time to kind of develop things and plan stuff out that we've said more things now that people are like i would also like that on a t-shirt <laughs> we're like wait 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 we're just getting the things that we said six months ago on <laughs> yeah so hopefully you guys still care about spoons and stuff yeah <laughs> um and weed in your mind garden and shoo a little bit um, of savage island yeah if you guys still i mean savage island seems to be a popular destination it so really does might as well get yourself a t-shirt or yeah. a bag or a mug or a water or a bottle sweatshirt. yeah um so Mm. I have something to tell you. Let's hear it. So, last weekend was supposed to be the uh, photography retreat that I had, but uh, oh, didn't yeah. have. Um, I don't think I went into detail about that, and I don't necessarily think that I will, but the photography retreat that I was planning fell through, but mm -hmm. I knew no matter what, I was going to need a break in November. Yes. And so I was going to keep the cabin that I had reserved for the retreat 
And I didn't care if I was alone in that cabin. Oh, I, I was wondered go. why you had that cabin. Okay. Yes. Originally yeah. it was for the retreat. So I decided I'm just going to take my family. My family and I are going to go. It sleeps 12 people. There's only four of us. <laughs> that should be fine. Yes. <laughs> um, it was just barely fine. Really? Because there's three rooms. Uh, and both of my children need to sleep in different rooms yeah. because of their ages. Like there's no, they can't eat. Need, they won't sleep in the car because one of them is annoying the other yep. one. <laughs> so there's three bedrooms. And so Forrest got one. Ollie got one. There was three beds in there. <laughs> He's like, you got to pick. my pick. Yep. And then Shane and I slept in a room with two. So Forrest got the like, oh yeah, he got like the solo one. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Um. So there is this fireplace in the center of the cabin. Ooh. and so dreamy. we got there and we didn't know how to start it and it was gas <laughs> oh. so we're trying to find a lighter whatever we get it we get it going whatever we sleep the next night we sleep that night next day ollie and i are up and i'm like you know what would be great a fire <laughs> uh oh okay yep <laughs> so for this gas fireplace you have to put in this key and you turn it mm-hmm. and that starts to the gas and then you have to light a lighter to turn on the fire mm-hmm. well <laughs> Ollie's standing there watching me do this Uh and he watches mommy light herself on fire (laughs) because I turned the gas on too high (gasps) and I didn't realize it. And so when I lit it, it went (laughs) my hair (laughs) caught on fire. There's little bits up here. Don't look at them. My bangs are shorter now on one side Uh, and I'm hunched over slapping my head <laughs> trying to put the flames out and ollie is just mortified <gasps> scream crying and oh i'm like God. mommy's fine mommy, <laughs> mommy is, is fine, fine as i'm trying to put myself out <laughs> i'm good i am good <laughs> i am fine do you see any other fire <laughs> honestly it hurts but <laughs> i i smell terrible i <laughs> want Oh my god, dude! Because burning hair is bad. <laughs> so <laughs> bad. And so Shane was sleeping in the one room, and I walked in. And I go, um, I just want to let you know everything is under control. I did traumatize our son by lighting myself on fire, but <laughs> in front of him, we are good. And he's like, "Is that what I smell?" And I'm like, "You do smell my hair burning. You do. That's what that is." Uh, do I'm you... gonna go get coffee. Do you want anything? <laughs> do you remember the time I lit my hair on fire? <laughs> no, was I'm I there. <laughs> no. Oh, why would I remember? Because I'm sure I've told you this story. Okay. So, well, okay. Someone mentioned they're like, weren't some of these stories repeated? And I want to be like, hey, one, I have said before that repeating stories is one of my biggest insecurities. Yeah, don't and- mention that. <laughs> Fucking rude. <laughs> Two. We have ADHD. Yeah. So every story is a new story every time. <laughs> I forget what I say. Then she'll be like, hey, did we mention this in the episode? I'm like, that episode is gone in my mind. <laughs> it happened a week ago yeah. and already it's wiped. That's a different person. <laughs> yep. I don't know her anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's funny because then I'll re-listen to the episodes. I've been doing that. I've been trying yeah. to. And it makes me giggle. I'm like, yeah, we are funny. <laughs> well, that's like when I, I will send TikToks that we've done i'm like hey i just put this up just so you know and like i giggle at them like it's the first time i've ever watched it i'm like damn that was good actually (laughs) that is funny um so one time Mm -hmm. i was (laughs) smoking the weed (laughs) i was with a group of older boys (laughs) okay who i was trying to impress yeah and so they were all smoke a weed passing a bongy around (laughs) i mean smoking tobacco out of it obviously yeah out of a pipe yeah and i had never smoked a bong before i was like oh what do i do (laughs) trying to act like sexy but i was also kind of drunk (laughs) how do you sexily do that (laughs) exactly okay so i like had my hair pulled back and then i was like (laughs) trying to light it but then you have to pull up so i needed two hands yeah. I think. But I was also kind of drunk. Four logos. <laughs> oh, no jokos. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So this was 2009. Okay. Yeah. The height of four logos. Yep. I was hammered hard. <laughs> <laughs> so as I'm lighting it, a piece of my hair just lightly falls down and it instantly was like, <laughs> <boom>. <laughs> and like the whole thing went up and all the guys in the room are fucking big <laughs> so they all go oh <laughs> but nobody helps me they're just like ah and i was like ah! Fine. So it straight up my bangs were like, <gasps> like <laughs> i have a picture from that night and i'm so high because of course <laughs> then i did smoke the weed 
<laughs> now that my hair is out of the way, let me get this. <laughs> And, and I completely stopped caring about my hair at that point. Oh. Uh, but in the and pictures, I haven't cared about my appearance since. <laughs> no, in the pictures, it's very funny because my bangs are like oh cut God. off. But I just tried to blend it with the rest of my hair, <laughs> which is not easy to do. No, it was yeah. bad. I went, and I smelled like burnt hair all night, <laughs> which like, is honestly the worst. I was like, "Sorry, everybody. Remember when I lit myself on fire? <laughs> you like literally <laughs> tried to walk around like it didn't just happen. I did. I was like, "Cool, that was weird." Anyways, <laughs> I did that to a two-year-old. <laughs> Honestly, but which one's worse? A bunch of really high people <laughs> or a two-year-old? But I feel like it's kind of the same. I probably trauma. That was probably a trauma thing. Like, no, yeah, that's a core in- memory. <laughs> for sure. Locked and loaded. He's yeah. like, he's gonna talk about that. My kid will bring up <laughs> shit that happened when he was like two. That like, I'm like, well, you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie, I didn't know that. Well, he's banking on you not. <laughs> yeah. oh. And so that's gonna be your kid's gonna be like, remember when you lit yourself on fire in front of me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sure do. I don't know why I didn't think because <laughs> all I didn't even try and put my hair up. It was just all down like this. And well, I was, I'm sure you weren't thinking that the fire was coming out of the fireplace. <laughs> well, at your purse. It was, okay, so you're probably imagining a fireplace that's like against the wall. Yeah. This was a circle in the middle of the room. Oh. So you could walk all, this is a 360, you can walk all the way around oh. this fireplace. Oh. So I stuck my head into it. <laughs> you were really asking for trouble. I, well, I did. I guess I didn't know where the gas was. I, I don't think much. I don't okay. understand gas. When, if I can't see it, it's not there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it was there. It is. That's the problem with gas <laughs> that I have. Yeah. Especially yeah. in relation to fire. I don't and like I, it. I'm someone who doesn't read directions mm-hmm. and I don't care to listen to them <laughs> either. I think everything's just going to be fine. Yeah. And occasionally with that mentality, you light yourself on fire. <laughs> Sure. That's just what happens. It really does. I've so. been there. I <laughs> I am you, you are me. Mm-hmm. Um also, they had a 90 gallon soaking tub outside. What? It's a hot tub, but there's no bubbles and there's no automate, <laughs> there's no jets. It honestly, it had some kind of um I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> it's some kind of like um, weed and feed like animal trough logo <laughs> on it so there's a chance that this was like a watering hole for cattle but they just put it outside the cabin <laughs> they were like soak yourself in it or something they did and they it takes an hour to fill oh my god and there's a hot water and a cold water they're like it'll pump like nine <laughs> a, a gallon of hot water a minute so It'll take about an hour. 15 ca- I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't <laughs> listen to directions or details. So anyway, it took about an hour to fill up. Jesus. And Shane, Matt and Amber were down. Mm-hmm. And we were all going to go sit in this soaking tub. <laughs> okay. Sure. And Shane was filling it up. And he comes in and he's like, it's ready. And so we walk out. This water's fucking hot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so Basically after like, like steaming yourself. We were. Yeah. After like a few minutes of sitting in and we're like, we got to like sit on the ledge yeah. of this trough because this is very hot. A lot. And so then we get back in and we're like, why is it getting hotter? <gasps> we're like convinced that it's really well insulated. We're trying to talk about how we can get one at our house <laughs> and why it's probably a better idea than a hot tub in the first place. And then we realized that the water's higher than before. <gasps> it's still filling. It was still filling. <laughs> We looked at Shane and he goes, well, I said it was ready. And we're like, yeah, we thought that meant you turned it off. And he's like, no, I just meant that it was full. <laughs> so it was still filling with hot water the whole time. Ow. Yeah. Oh, my and God. And then he thought he turned it off, but all he did was turn the hot water on higher. Oh because we drained God. some and then turned the cold on to yeah. like make it better. But he turned the hot on. <laughs> anyway, lesson learned. Ow. That's a soaking tub. So why is it better than a hot tub? Because you don't have to maintain it. Oh. As soon as you're done with it, you, you it's like a drain bath. it. Oh. Yes. Yeah, because my sister has a hot tub and she's got to like. It's a lot of maintenance. It's basically a pool. <laughs> you yeah. got to like shock it sometimes yeah. and like clean it out. Mm-hmm. Mm. Levels. Yeah. Ugh, levels. <laughs> Chemicals. <laughs> yeah. You saw what I did with gas fire. Right? There's no fucking way I could <laughs> no, deal with I that. touch chemicals ever. No. Chemicals and gas and things of the such. 
scare me because 100 mm-hmm. percent that's how i'm gonna die <laughs> certainly i don't pay attention to those nope. and i'm like it's probably fine do, 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 do. i'm cleaning with the cleaner <laughs> that's like, like really bad and my head is in the oven with it and i'm like whoa no. <laughs> well that burns when i breathe <laughs> that probably isn't good <laughs> but i'm almost done <laughs> that means it's getting really clean <laughs> inside of your lungs as well yeah um What's what's happening with you? Oh. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I'm just here. Mm-hmm. I'm just living. Yeah. I'm just living. Well, how was your Thanksgiving? <laughs> I mean, it was good. Mm-hmm. No, it was fine. It was fine. Mm-hmm. Um, It's really hard. Uh, And I know it's going to be harder next year. That's yep. the thing. Like, I don't know how people do it Um, with like toddler, multiple toddlers, because you have to work around nap schedules and then people are mad if you're not going to their house. But it's like, well, my kid has to sleep. And luckily, my kid is small enough that she slept pretty much the whole time. Yeah. But it was still hard. because She was sleeping. And I knew if I set her down like at one place at Corey's parents, mm-hmm. I was like, if I set her down right now, um, she's going to start screaming and want to eat because she knows I'm about to eat. So I was like trying to yep. get my plate with her. And then I had to eat with her in my hands because mm-hmm. I was trying not to like pass her around yeah. too much. Um, so it was, I just know next year is going to be tough for the holidays because it's like, yeah, I can't remember how I I did it with Noah. I really don't know. I think a long time ago. Yeah. Going to places because I was like, this kid needs a nap, man. Well, we did. Noah was at Christmas or no Thanksgiving because that's how we decided what we were having for Christmas. (laughs) We had half the family on one side for Turkey and the other half for ham. And we set Noah in the middle and we made him crawl to which side. And that's how we decided what we were having for dinner. (laughs) Yes. On Christmas. That was fun. What did he pick? Ham. Ham. I knew it. I was like, (laughs) I knew that kid loves ham. (laughs) For sure. That was a cognitive decision as a toddler. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Um, But I think it's just, it's something to remember for people who have children. Because I'm like the only one. Yep. Um, on my dad's or on my mom's I was side. Say, hey, I am your dad. So I don't know on my mom's <laughs> side that like has children. Yeah, and then it's just difficult because people I don't think understand that like that was towards the end of the night that I went. We didn't really do much. We just went to visit mm-hmm. my one cousin was here from California, so I just wanted to yeah. see, see her. And uh, it was just difficult because I think people forget that like kids get overstimulated and when they're Mm -hmm. going from place to place place especially a new baby Mm -hmm. that she's gonna be fussy and I was upstairs most of the time breastfeeding Mm -hmm. (laughs) so like isolating myself um there's really no reason for me to be there because I was just stuck in a room alone Mm -hmm. listening to other people have fun (laughs) so in our side of the family like our dad's side doesn't get together no and so but like I think our side getting together would, would have been easier because so many people have kids that yes. they get it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Or our, our kids could play together yeah. because, because that's part of the problem too is when your kids are the only kids, mm-hmm. it's not fun for them because... Right. It's Noah went in the other room and was just watching TV. But you're like, the only like connection what, they have. Yeah. And they're like, who are these other adults who I only see s- on occasion? He sat yeah. there for like five minutes and had conversations. And there's um, my cousin's from california her boyfriend works yeah. for like a toy company so they were talking he goes i said are you having a good time in here with him and Jaden?" and he was like uh yeah we just have a lot or we we just have some really good conversations <laughs> <laughs> that's what noah said and i was like good good i'm glad well Great. you guys have some conversing to do i guess yeah. i'll be upstairs um shane and i got into a little bit of a tiff on the drive home be, for the exactly that reason mm-hmm. of my kids being off their schedule mm-hmm. and then not we banked on them sleeping in the car they did not sleep in the yeah. car um and they didn't have their normal meal they were around people they had never met before yeah. um or if they had met him it wasn't like enough for them to remember necessarily and right. so it's just it's overstimulation it's uh, different place there's different food like the schedule's weird um and yeah it's so loud and bright and there's so when many that people happens, and i start to have a panic attack me too. because i'm looking at my kids like i'm sorry i can't do better for you and yeah. i know why you're acting the way you're acting but i can't do anything about it yeah and i'm stressed because you're stressed yeah but you you're not responsible for my feelings right and so when we were putting ollie to bed 
um, I was washing my face, which I've done a couple times, everybody. Yay. How do we feel about that? Um, and Ollie started calling for me and Shane was putting him to bed and I walked in and he goes, daddy's sad. Oh. And I was like, why is daddy sad? You. Oh. And I was like, I looked at Shane like, this motherfucker, did you just use our two-year-old? How did you? I, well, <laughs> Shane goes, I swear to God, I, I have no idea. That. And he was like, it, Ollie basically said like, you need to talk to dad because he's sad. Whoa. And I was like, hey, two-year-old, <laughs> can you stop <laughs> eavesdropping me? Yeah. On get out of our business because like shane and i started to have the conversation and once i realized like this is a topic for not around our children yeah <laughs> and not while we're stuck in a car right um we stopped talking so it's not even like we had this discussion in front of ollie like, right he j- i don't know if he was like picking up on the vibes or right. what but it was shane and i looked at each other and started laughing like what the fuck <laughs> is happening right how now? do you know yeah that's crazy mm-hmm. kids man no. See, and Noah gets that uh, he can pick up on things too. So he knows that I'm stressed, and then he thinks that he's the reason that I'm stressed. And I'm like, no, you're being so good. I'm just stressed that you're being toted from place to place yeah. to place. So, it's- and I don't want this. I think that's the hard part too. And the topic this week is relational poverty. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. But I think part of our issue, at least for me, is I remember what holidays were like for us and that's not at all what it's like for my kids. Yeah. And it's yeah. it's devastating to feel like the holidays that I grew up loving are not the ones I experience and not the ones I'm going to watch my kids experience. Yep. And that's one of the reasons we want to talk about relational poverty because yeah, it's the holiday season and that's so fun, but also it's not fun for yeah. a lot of people and it's a <clears throat> We're in a really weird time. The pandemic was weird, but also like the aftermath of it is weird because I don't know. Like, <clears throat> I had half of my people, like people on my dad's or mom's side, wearing masks, and mm-hmm. that was great because they were like, you know, it could just be whatever, but yeah. we want to wear masks just to be safe and things like that. But then my anxiety is still like, should I even be here? Mm-hmm. But how long do you go missing holidays? Right. You know, it right. was so hard for me to be like. Do I seclude myself in my home forever? Yeah. Until this is all over. And then, especially when you're possible? doing things in a safe way. Yeah. 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 And trying to, I mean, as much right. as you can. But it's right. like, yeah, at this point, what's the right decision? Which is always, as a parent, the hardest thing is like, right. am I making the right decision right now? Right. Because, especially in the first few years, I feel if you make the wrong one at the wrong time, it could be like devastating, yep. obviously. Mm-hmm. So, so you're like in a minefield. Yes. It's yeah. just scary. It's scary. It's constant anxiety all the time mm-hmm. and trying to make the right decisions for everybody. Which is why I wanted to talk about relational poverty because um, I know I talked to you guys about the book that I was quote unquote reading called What Happened to You by Dr. Bruce Perry and Oprah Winfrey. Um, I'm really excited. And I, I want to read that. It's so good. You can. I'm done with it. You can have oh, it. Oh, okay. But um, I... No, I said I was going to talk about the book, but there's so much in it. There's no way to talk about the book. The whole thing. Yeah. yeah. But I had never heard of relational poverty before. Mm -hmm. And the way that they spoke about it toward the end of the book, I was like, this is something that I think would bring so many people peace or just understanding. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to talk about it, especially because there's not a whole lot about it outside of the book. Yeah. Because I I mentioned it to Sierra thinking it was a thing. And she was like, Hey, um, not a whole lot on the Google. <laughs> I cannot find shit. Yeah. <laughs> like it was so hard. Yeah. Because a lot of times I found a couple articles, mm-hmm. but I really try to find like dot orgs or yeah. you know, things well, like that, that. And there was a lot of stuff even with YouTube videos, because you guys know that's my preference, um, that was faith based. Yeah. And that's not fair. Yeah. And that's not realistic for us to shove a, a specific religion down people's throats. Yeah. Because there is I can understand why and we'll get into that. Um, but that's not no. the route this is going. Just right. a heads up if any of you are like church drama, <laughs> bell ring, no thank you. Yeah, no. But not what I not what I wanted to do and then not what we, <laughs> where we not wanted what's to go. Gonna happen. Yeah. So no worries there. Yes. Um I also want to say that like Having a podcast is weird because I there's so much world and our our voices are reaching so many people 
in so many different situations. Right. And um, the terminology that was used was relational poverty. I don't know if like using poverty in a way to explain something that's not monetary yeah. um, would be offensive. But in case someone is like, don't use it like that. That's this is just how they've used it, so I'm regurgitating it. Yeah. Um, if there's another way to say it, please. Or if you're like Jerry, it's not a big deal. I don't know what's a big deal. So I'm, we we are learning. Yes, because we keep getting told. So and that's fine. Yeah. And I don't have a problem with being told. Yeah. But before someone, I, I don't like to leave space for people to assume my that, intent, and yes. I don't want to be uh, disrespectful of someone who is experiencing. Um, poverty in regards to food or income sure. or um experiencing homelessness anything like that so there was a big thing with relational poverty and homelessness so yes. I, I have a feeling that that's like does it talk about it in the book not necessarily but i could understand why yeah. it would um i'm gonna start guys here's the thing <laughs> jerry's not the researcher for a reason <laughs> um but we're gonna do our best I had one page and I just lost it. I had one page that I'm going to start with. Let me find that. Okay. I have a page that I'm going to start with and I'm just going to read like straight up verbatim what they said. Um, and then I'm going to bounce around to some of the other points. But just so you understand why when I was listening to this on audiobook, my brain went, oh my fuck. Yeah. Like I get why I feel the way that I do now. Yeah. Because... There, there's a, there's a word for it. Yeah. Okay. So think of the diversity within a small multifamily, multi-generational clan. Children growing up had numerous adults and older children who could model, teach, nurture, discipline, and care for them. Each person in the clan had a unique set of strengths, the right person at the right time. No single person was expected to provide all of the emotional, social, physical, or cognitive needs for the developing child. This is incredibly unlike our modern world. We expect a single working mother to be the one to throw the baseball with her eight-year-old, rock the newborn, read the three-year-old, read to the three-year-old, and by the way, cook a nutritious meal, help with homework, do the laundry, get everyone to bed, then wake up and get them all ready for childcare and school so she can go to work all day, only to rush home and do it all again, all alone. And like, oh, this is gonna get me. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. When I was listening to this, because I, I stopped reading it halfway through and just decided to listen because time didn't allot me to sit down and read. I was like, fuck. Yeah. Um, I'm going to keep going because this all goes into relational poverty. Um, so this switches to Oprah. She needs people to step up, people who support her, give her some breaks, step in and do some of those things with her children. We're not meant to be isolated and alone. She feels overwhelmed or feels like it's impossible to do it all. It's because it is impossible. Dr. Perry says it's such an unfair expectation of our society. <laughs> I might need this tissue. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no other society in the history of this planet has ever asked a single adult to provide the physical, social, emotional, and material needs of multiple children by themselves. Oprah says you're not meant to raise children isolated and alone. Dr. Perry says, absolutely not. We're meant to distribute caregiving among the many adults in our band, our community. In a typical hunter-gatherer clan, for every child under six, there were four developmentally mature individuals who could model, discipline, nurture, and instruct the child. For that every is a child? four to one ratio. Four developmentally mature individuals for each child under six. Wow. We now think that one caregiver for four young children, one to four ratio, is enriched. Mm -hmm. That is one sixteenth of what our developing, developing social brain is looking for. That is relational poverty. Wow. Oof. Right? Yeah. Man. So, and, and I don't even, um, I know that being a single mom um, isn't like everyone in our audience and I'm not a single mom. You're no, no longer yeah. a single mom, but I think that if you're a, uh, work from home mom, stay at home mom, or if you're a working parent in general, like if you are just a person with a child yeah. who feels like they don't have 
four other functioning adults to help right? you. Even if it's just, well, and we were just, me and Corey were discussing the lack of paternity care. Yes. I mean, obviously maternity care as well in America is yeah. shit, but paternity care is basically non-existent. Mm-hmm. Corey has a good job and he got a week off. Yep. A week in that week, I'm still healing. Like, oh, yeah. I'm still trying to take care of me. And then all of a sudden, he goes back to work, and I'm by myself for, mm-hmm. I don't know, 12 hours a day. Yep. Um, And I'm healing, but also have to take care of this person on no sleep by myself. Like, it was a shock yep. to the system. Oh, yeah. It- I had, with Ollie, Shane was home for three days. And one of those days, he still had to go in. Mm-hmm. And then with Forrest, mind you, Ollie was not even, he was like 20 months old. Yeah. Um, Shane got a week. Yeah. And that's with, with Noah, his dad was off for the time we were in the hospital. Right. His first night back was the day that we got home. Like, I had to be home, and I was 20. Yeah. And I had to be home by myself with a newborn. At that time, too, I had way less of a support system Mm -hmm. than I do now. And it was like, when I look back and I try to think about how I survived when Noah was a newborn, I kept thinking this because as I was, you know, with Sawyer, like reliving her newbornness, Mm -hmm. I was thinking, like, I don't remember this with Noah. I don't remember. And I think I truly, like, blacked it out, blocked it out because it was so fucking hard. Yep. And like traumatizing. I did also have postpartum depression. Mm-hmm. So I think I literally just like can't remember it because it's not there anymore in my brain because my yeah. brain is like, we don't want to remember how you felt during right. that time. That was horrific. You probably weren't focused on anything but just making it through. Literally just surviving. So when your body's on autopilot yep. like that, it's not like you're <laughs> really soaking in the moment. <laughs> yeah. nope. No, I was like, I don't remember his first bath. I don't remember any of this stuff that I'm experiencing with her, his mm. first smile, any of that, I can't remember. And it's yeah. like, because those were not the moments I was, I was just like, let's make, are we make both it alive? to the next Good. day? Yeah. yeah. Let's try to make it. And I, I, when I think about stuff like this and I think about how, um, the, the phrase it takes a village, mm-hmm. um, that phrase I have cried over so many times in therapy. Basically, crying out to my therapist like where's my village yeah, where where is my village and i don't want anyone in my family to hear that and be um offended like i obviously can't decide how you take my words but right. i also recognize that when i was growing up i know that we had a village yeah because i spent days at my village's home yes i was bouncing in between a lot of different people and i I felt like I understood what a village was because I spent time with my parents' village. Yeah. But those people also weren't working like my parents are working. That's exactly it. They weren't working like my siblings are working. And so... And I think a lot of times... um, Like, I remember my grandpa retired when he was 50. Yes. He was able to retire at 50. So they could... And my grandma stopped working around the same time. They were able to be there Mm 24-7 with me. My mom is in her 50s and is nowhere close to being able to retire. Right. So she can't help me. She works a 9 to 5 just like everybody else. So during that time, she can't be there. Right. And I feel like we live in a society now that doesn't allow for a village. No, you can't. Who's, who's Who's free? Right. Who has the time? Right. Well, that was one of the reasons that I was like, I cannot be a teacher. I can't I can't be a teacher because I have to do this until I'm 65. No, no, ma'am. Yeah, no. certainly not. I can't. And, and it's tough because my grandma, I guess I don't know how old she was whenever I was born or whenever all my cousins were born, but like she didn't work. Yeah. And so she was able to be there and to be child care when she was needed mm-hmm. and to be one of those people, one of those other adults to help nurture and be another resource yeah so it didn't all fall on my parents exactly and now that's not the same situation no my sisters work full-time jobs yep um my parents work full-time jobs shane's family works full-time jobs like mm-hmm. that it's just not realistic and it's frustrating yeah because then what do you do and it, <laughs> then you have the people that are like why aren't we having millennials aren't having kids why we can't Right. How are we supposed to? It- the nuclear family is breaking down. Yeah, because 
we're dying. Yeah, we can't fucking do this. We are breaking down. And one of the things it says in here is one of the biggest predictors of your well-being is your connectedness to other people. Yeah. And when I realize that I... Oh, that's good. You're the only friend that I see. <laughs> like, week to week, you're the only person that I get to talk to. Yep. Really outside of my husband. And... I'm so lonely yeah. and like it's hard to say because I know we have thousands and thousands of people who listen and want to be our friend and like that's just not it's not doable I'm yeah. so grateful for all of you and like there is a connectedness yeah like without this I don't know what how we would function no true uh, like a hundred percent that's how, what I think about all the time because when we didn't have this, right, I struggled. Right, it was awful. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think friendship breakups are like so so hard. Because the older you get, the harder it is to connect. Um, I wanted to read another part that's not necessarily about um being a parent, but more so about being um someone who either lives in like an urban setting or who moves. Yeah, because that can create um another issue with. Uh, connectedness okay like i said i don't know if this is the exact part i wanted but i'm sure i'll get to it eventually so um dr perry says disconnection is disease i believe we don't have enough quiet conversational moments listening to a friend with no other distractions that kind of interaction leads to completely different quality of human connection a different depth. I think we crave that. And many of us turn to social media to find it, but ultimately those interactions don't satisfy the craving. Mm -hmm. If you don't belong in the quote unquote in group, your marginaliza marginalization can contribute to feelings of not belonging. And the reason I wanted to include the whole like turning to social media thing, I think our lack of connectedness with people is the reason that we started the podcast. Yeah. Because if we couldn't find connectedness, we wanted to create we're it. Like, we're going to make it. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, that's why we're here. And I know we've said that a thousand times, but like. To, you really wanted to hit home. Well, to read in a book from a doctor who's made it his life's work to understand trauma uh, and how rewiring and understand what happened to people um, can heal them, knowing that connectedness is at the core of it and realizing that we're trying to do that mm -hmm. like was just really meaningful to me because sometimes I feel like this is just I I minimize it right me because pe because people have straight up said to me oh yeah I wish I could get paid to sit on a couch and drink and yep. I'm like yeah that's all I do yep <laughs> that's Dude. literally it <laughs> oh god that's so frustrating so these tissues got fucked up <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> those are toddler tissues <laughs> They were touched by a toddler. Good. I'm going to put them near my eye. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad idea. I wake up with pink eye tomorrow. <laughs> um, when a person gets the signals, many of which are subconscious, that they belong, their stress response systems quiet down, telling them they're safe. They feel regulated and rewarded. But when they get cues that they don't belong, their stress response systems are activated. And don't belong cues are our default response to anyone we don't know, especially if they don't have the attributes of our familiar group. We view this person as a potential threat. So the reason I bring that up is because this could happen to anyone who is moving mm -hmm. and so if you're living in a new place and you don't have that connectedness and you're not in a familiar spot anymore you're assessing everything around you all the time yeah for a threat yeah like are you helpful or are you hurtful am i in danger or am i safe and so that's going to exhaust you and deplete you of your resources mm -hmm. and your um Stress responses are activated all the time, right? Which means you're going to be in a, a heightened state, yeah, basically of like a fight or flight kind of mode. Yes, yeah, all the time, yeah. And it that can be harder, yeah, to then make connections with people. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of you have said that you've moved and that you've listened to us because you don't know anyone else. Like I just want to validate you right now and say, like, it is hard, yeah. I know that you probably have heard other people move away and they make friends and they do all this stuff. 
That's the exception. That's not the rule. <laughs> We've lived in this place for 30 years and I can't make friends to save my fucking life. <laughs> yeah. So I can't imagine. Well, that's because I'm... where we live, I look around, I'm like, danger, danger, <laughs> danger. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I can't imagine moving different states. That's honestly, I've thought about moving different states. And that's one of the reasons I panic when I think about it, because mm-hmm. I'm like, sure, it seems nice to get away from some of these people. But also when I get away from others, I'm like, who do I have then? Right. And, and knowing, if I'm sitting at home alone because Corey's working. And knowing that connectedness yeah. is so crucial for security and safety and feeling belonging. Know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you feel like you don't belong, that's what he was saying is it's connected. <laughs> It's connected to depression and mm-hmm. anxiety. And I'm not saying that like you can heal your depression by making a friend. That's not what I'm saying. No, but, but it can heighten it. It can yeah. worsen and exacerbate all of those um, mental illnesses because you, you're you alone. Yeah. Well. And loneliness and isolation is a disease. Yeah. I it, It's one of the things that I know Shane struggles with a lot. And... um. Because he's not from around here. No, he's not. Yeah. And he is no longer even in contact with the guys that he was friends with from back home. Right. Because how can you? I mean, we struggle with the people that we're friends with that live around here still with getting together and keeping the friendship alive. And then Mm -hmm. I can't imagine if you're that far away and trying to keep it. Yep. And that's the problem, too, is like because... If you're not in the same stage of life as someone, you yep. you and you we've already established you don't have help, you don't have a village, mm-hmm. like you can't maintain some of those relationships. Yeah. That's I, the other thing I struggle with is how do I maintain a friendship when all of my friends <laughs> have young children and are struggling like I am and I yeah. can't be there for them because I also am with my children and it's yeah. like we're all fighting the same fight basically but separately mm-hmm. at our own places because And I'm I'm just straight up say it. Playdates aren't fun. No, my God. I'm it's not, so stressful. <laughs> I've not necessarily done a lot of them, but yeah. like the one or two that I've done, they are not fun. <laughs> no, it's not like, oh my God, moms just get to chill and drink wine. You while don't the, get no, to chill. No, you don't get to chill. Mm-hmm. Especially with toddlers. Like if you were, maybe your children no. were a little older. Like I'm like two toddlers no. constantly stressed out that yeah. something's going to happen or I'm having to like prep my house because I want it to look a certain way or someone does get hurt or the dog poops on the stairs and it's <laughs> like that's a mess. I felt terrible at my sister's house. I left my coffee out and she wasn't even home. I was there like my other sister was watching her son and so I brought the kids over. I'm like cousin play date. This will be cute. Freaking left my coffee out and the dog knocked it all over the rug and now I'm like great now I ruined their rug <laughs> no I was like mortified yeah um, okay so this is Dr. Perry talking about like the stress response thing that I was just talking about he says the unpredictability and insecurities of poverty drain the stress response systems bandwidth in ways that make opportunities to escape poverty extremely difficult to take advantage of so I don't think he's necessarily just talking about relational poverty here Mm -hmm. i think he's also talking about um like food insecurity employment things like that Mm -hmm. where it is so much harder to live in a world when you're experiencing poverty in some kind of way yeah that you cannot take advantage of any of the resources available to you to help you get Get up on your feet yes yeah because you're so depleted you're drowning yes yeah and I think that's important for someone to hear because I think that people will look at someone who's experiencing um, either food insecurity or struggling with unemployment or struggling with homelessness or who is struggling with relational poverty and not having connectedness and will just say something as easy as like, well, just join a group. Yeah. Just go to a mommy and me thing. Uh-huh. Just go to church, which... <laughs> Not helpful. Sorry, guys. Guess <laughs> um, those of you who are listening to the faith episode now, <laughs> twenty twenty one Jerry feels a little differently than twenty nineteen Jerry. I'll remember say that. when? Remember when? Um, 20- was that twenty twenty Jerry? I think that was twenty twenty Jerry. Yeah. But remember when 2019, 2020 Jerry said she was going to turn me? <laughs> me thinks it worked the other way around. <laughs> oh, there's. I just. I just. I just feel. 
a little different. You a little, you're allowed to change your mind. I feel different. I and I have. Yeah, I have. Um, but I don't like these fail safes. Like this worked for me. It'll work for you. Or oh, just do that. this. Yeah. Don't give me solutions when you haven't experienced, experienced my the problem. problem. Mm-hmm. Because it seems easy when you don't know what's actually going what, on. Yes, what I'm dealing with right now. Mm-hmm. Just reach out. Just reach out when you need help. Well, there's a million reasons why I can't and why I didn't. And then also when I do. Or why I won't. And you shut me down. I yeah. can't. Then I can't do it again. Now I've already been shut down. I feel like an idiot for even reaching out and asking for help. And then I just don't want to be a burden. That's a trauma thing. Yeah. <laughs> from my childhood. Mm-hmm. So it's so much easier to be like, well, why? just ask for help and then mm-hmm. realize that I can't. I wish I could. Right. I try. Mm-hmm. I, it's it's a struggle for me to even try. Right. So. Um, Oprah then says isolation and loneliness are an epidemic. Dr. Perry says best the best predictor of your current mental health. Fuck, which was I this mentioned. written by like around 2020 or because I feel like if, yes. I was going to say yes. if it wasn't, then shit. That, they talked about the pandemic. In yeah. As okay. Well. Okay. Um, the best predictor of your current mental health is your current relational health or connectedness. Simply put, modern life provides fewer opportunities for relational interactions in a multifamily, multi-generational environment. The continuous social interactions provided uh, provide a rich source of regulation, reward, and learning. And that's how we used to live. In 1790, 63% of our nation's households had five or more people. Holy shit. Only 10% had two or fewer. Today, those numbers have basically flipped. Yep. In 2006, only 8% of households had five or more people. 60% had two or fewer I got chills for some reason. Um, And in a recent survey of selected urban communities in the U.S., Europe, and Japan, up to 60% of all households were just one person. Wow. Mm -hmm. So imagine trying to have connection with people. Yeah. Like real, intimate, one-on-one connection with someone when you live alone or live with one other person. Yeah. That's wow. It's not doable. No. And so you wonder, people are like, oh, back in my day, the whole back in my day thing, the world is your like that day anymore. doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, it's gone. Your day's gone. Right. And so the idea or the belief that we are going to be the same is it doesn't work. It makes yeah. no sense. And it's not helpful. It's no. not helpful for what we're dealing with now and what solutions we need for the future. Yeah, exactly. And and then you wonder why people, I mean, I'm going to bring it back to myself here for a minute, but you wonder why people stay in abusive situations mm-hmm. or situations that like not even completely, you know, just like emotional abuse. It's just like you, you felt what it feels like to be lonely. And yeah, maybe that's not the best situation, but it's better than having no one. Right. That one person who's not being the best to you is better than having no one at all. And so you stay until you can't physically stay anymore right and you know the world yells at you for it and it's like you don't understand what i'm which one's worse right you know being completely alone doing this all by myself or being with this person who's a terrible person (laughs) because i don't know how to have a relationship anymore yeah i don't know how to connect with people anymore and And i've been isolated yes and my stress responses are so heightened and so reactive that i'm so tired yeah and god forbid you want you know the small feeling of like dopamine that you get being around that person when they're good Mm -hmm. is enough for you to want them to stay right you know so fuck it's a lot this is a lot i know so they go on to talk about why because here's the thing knowing you have um anxiety depression adhd any of these things um if you're if you recognize i believe i'm someone who is struggling with with relational poverty Mm -hmm. what do you do now yeah and also i think finding those things out i know that we cheer for each other when we get when we add a new set of letters to our (laughs) um mental health resume yes but that's not always the case. And there is kind of a period of like, I don't know if grief is the right word, but like there's a transitional period when you find out 
that you have PTSD. Yeah, for it's instance. like how do I how do I make a new normal for myself? Yes. What do, what does my life look, look like, like now? Because it's almost like um the doctor when you're at the optometrist <laughs> like I go to the optometrist. <laughs> like I've been one time. But they're like one or two, yeah. two or three, one or three. It's almost like as soon as you get that diagnosis, mm -hmm. it's like clear. Yep. Oh my god, that makes so much sense. Yeah. But now um, how but do I live is, with this new eyesight? It is giving me a migraine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This isn't what the world looked like to me before and I'm having trouble navigating now. Yes, that this is actually what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and so Oprah goes on to say... Because uh, since go I've gotten... It. I was going to Go say, ahead, interrupt Oprah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> um, since Madam, I've gotten... Madam. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Pro. <laughs> um, I just always think that her first name is O oh. and then Pro is... <laughs> That's not right. I know. She's... She, She's the bomb. Okay. Um, since I've gotten diagnosed with ADHD, it's still weird for me to try to tell people like this is because of my ADHD and not feel like they're going to be like, okay, thanks <laughs> for the excuse. Um, how about you just do it? And I'm <laughs> yep. like, well, okay. I'm trying. Mm -hmm. I'm just explaining why it's a little bit harder for yeah. me than, you and know. This is all scenario in your head. Well, for sure. But, yeah. I, but so, also. No, I do the same thing. I have already taken so many online quizzes to be like do i actually have this oh because my god i've gotten diagnosed by two different people two yep. different professionals and i'm like mm, still don't believe it <laughs> still <laughs> think i'm just why making not. this up in my head yep. as an excuse of why i'm messy yep. lazy disorganized mm -hmm. blah 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 because those are actually your core qualities yeah because there couldn't be a reason that those are no i've just been told that sierra you're just lazy and messy that's mm -hmm. just who you are as a person yep gross figure out how to be cleaner and i'm like oh well i can't <laughs> whoopsie turns out it's a personality trait <laughs> um so oprah says it's the recognition that what i've been through has caused me to have these kinds of feelings and i'm not the only one it makes sense it makes sense that if you're an overworked mother of three or four with a history of trauma you'll have trouble coping while trying to carry your burdens all by yourself mm -hmm. your health is being compromised in ways that you don't even recognize mm -hmm. and then to realize that the reason you feel so overwhelmed is that you haven't found a good way to regulate yourself. This is why giving back to yourself is so important. If you aren't regulated yourself, how can you parent or work effectively? Uh, I know. I was like, ouch, Oprah. I know. <laughs> Damn. Ow. Um, and then Dr. Perry says, if we help the children but don't meet the needs of the adults, our work will have little impact. This is one of the most important principles of any trauma-informed approach. You have to help the frontline adults who will be working with the children and youth. Yeah. This shift in focus is challenging for some of our systems. Looking at you, government. <laughs> in the child mental health system, for example, the patient is the child. The system's economic model typically doesn't include paying a clinician if they want to give time to the child's teacher, coach, or even parents. This is short-sighted. We know that a dysregulated adult cannot regulate a dysregulated child. Mm -hmm. An exhausted, frustrated, dysregulated adult cannot regulate anybody. Yeah. As you point out, if you don't give back to yourself, you simply will not be effective as a teacher, leader, supervisor, parent, coach, anything. Self-care is huge. Unfortunately, many people feel some guilt about taking care of themselves. They view self-care as selfish. It's not selfish. <laughs> what that made me cry. it's essential remember the major tool you have in helping others change whether you're a parent teacher coach therapist or friend is you relationships are the currency of change wow okay i'm gonna branch off from that mm -hmm. so i am in um like a pregnancy group that now turned into a mom group for people who have had children the same time as me okay and there was a woman who made a post um she is chinese mm -hmm. and she made a post about um her live-in nanny and said something about this and then the comments were like why do you have a live-in nanny blah 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 she explained um it's chinese tradition again i don't know if this is but this is what she said right it's chinese tradition 
um, a lot of times to have a live-in nanny for the mothers for the first time. So the live-in nanny will take care of literally everything and just bring the baby to you when it needs breastfed. Mm -hmm. And um, like we'll take care of cooking, cleaning, taking care of diaper changing, um, let the mom sleep because they view postpartum self-care oh. as more important right. than like that, whatever. And the comments from American women underneath her post, which really wasn't asking for opinions, but right. it was just like, I can't imagine that. I would feel, or why would you even want to want someone else taking care of your child blah 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 just basically right. mom shaming guilting this mother into being like oh you're not as good of a mother because you're not the only person taking care of your child while right. you're also healing from a trauma right that just happened to your body and when she explained like it's a tradition it's a thing that a lot of women do for postpartum self-care right. Right. so that i can heal and be the best mother that i can be right. so that my milk supply can regulate itself so that breastfeeding is easier right because i'm sorry your supply goes down when you are stressed when you don't take care of yourself um, with water, food, when you're not getting enough sleep, all of these things are the reason why it's so hard for so many women to be able to breastfeed yeah. is because we're trying to do it all as one person while also healing from the trauma of giving birth. And it was just crazy to me that um, it's almost like we've been brainwashed into thinking that if we don't do it all, we're not good moms. Right. Like we are failing as mothers if we don't do literally everything. Right. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Yes. When I was reading this, I was like, why the fuck are we all as why, Americans? Did, why is that not something that we should strive for? To have? Yeah. That that should be a cultural thing in our culture. White yes. people's culture. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, an Amer like an American thing that we should look at that and be like, oh, my God, that's a thing that we should do. How amazing that they prioritize the mother in such a way. Yes. To best care for, for her child for the rest of it, its yes. development. For that for, it that's was only a long for, game, baby. We're not in it for the long we're game. We're not. It was only for the first month that she was talking about. I really, realistically, what does that baby need from us for the first month? Right. Sure, to be around us and breastfeed and yeah. things like that. But like somebody else can change the diapers. Somebody yeah. else can hold it while you yes. sleep. You know yes. what I mean? Somebody else can cook your meals mm -hmm. and bring them to you. They, I think, I guess they're not also, they also are like not supposed to leave the house for that month. Mm -hmm. So like they're there with the baby. Yeah. It's just literally someone else is doing all the hard work and it was just crazy to me how many women were like programmed to think that that meant that she was somehow a lesser mother when it's like prioritizing herself so she could be the, the best mother she could be for her baby right is not in any way making her a less parent than no. you but we've been taught that yep and that's crazy mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I keep saying crazy and I hate that word because my therapist says not to use it. <laughs> but, it but it just is mind boggling to me that wild. Yeah. Yeah. Bananas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's what it reminded me of what they said there is just like, that's what we're supposed to think. We ha we can do it all, and if you don't do it all, you're not super mom. And you so I'm so tired of being super mom. <laughs> me too. I'm over it. But it's weird because when people like congratulate me or they're like, "Wow, Jerry, I could never do what you do." I'm like, I'm like eh, "That eh, feels eh. good. <laughs> I like but that." But also, it feels very bad at the exact <laughs> yeah. same time. Okay, so Oprah says, "I wouldn't be who I am without my trauma. So I own it. I claim it, and by doing that, I believe I have found a way to use it in service." of others empathy compassion oh, and forgiveness relatable but i wouldn't have become the evolved human being that i am still in the process of becoming if i had everything at my disposal at my disposal or had everything i wanted exactly the moment that i thought i wanted it sure um dr perry said i feel the same way it's true though that the cost of wisdom can be very high mm -hmm. and for many people the pain never goes never goes good job jerry not screenshotting the next part of that <laughs> sentence anyway i like that he said the price of wisdom is high yeah it is because i think we've talked about that before that like the the lessons that we've learned and the experiences that we've gone through have been horrific but we have found a way to use them to help others mm -hmm. escape and um heal and relate yeah so I think that that's good for other people to hear as well, to know that like your trauma doesn't define you and yes. it doesn't have to bury you. Um, 
And then I also wanted to mention something else that Dr. Perry said. He said, you can't give what you don't get. If no one ever spoke to you, you can't speak. If you've never been loved, you can't be loving. Oh, and I think that that's important um, because there are certain things that I don't feel like I'm very good at. And I realize now it's because I've never experienced it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how. I need to be vague here. (laughs) I don't know how to do certain things because I don't think I ever saw them. Yeah. And I hope that you guys can relate to that in some way that you can connect that to something. I'm not going to um, elaborate. Elaborate. But that was really reassuring to hear because I feel like when you were saying you know you think that you should be super mom Mm -hmm. and you think you should be able to do it all but we're not meant to do it all no and also you cannot beat yourself up for not being able to do something that you were never taught how to do yeah oh that's good i like that well i didn't come up with it (laughs) well dr perry did (laughs) and oprah so like i can't claim it but it hit me really hard so i wanted to share it um so the last thing i wanted to bring up was what healthy did i not screenshot it what good am i (laughs) so i bet you're sitting there thinking hey jerry he's here what is a healthy relational situation look like i'm really glad you asked (laughs) dr perry has an answer (laughs) so ideally if a child is growing up in a relationally wealthy home With lots of opportunities for safe, stable, and nurturing interactions, they will be building their connectedness and resilience. This insight was a core understanding of all of the traditional child rearing and healing practices I learned about from indigenous elders. He goes into how he um, visited different tribes and learned from them, spent time with them about how they deal with trauma and the importance of connectedness with them. So like it's... Well, I was going to say also, um, culturally, I think there's a lot of other cultures that are really family and like yes. um of system of adults yes raising children together is like the core yes. of their culture yep. and we don't have that and i wish we did i think that i think that capitalism has to do with that and being taught that everybody needs to work 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 and that's the most important thing yep. that you can do as an adult human is just make money is just throw it at be, your kid yeah be yeah. productive in some way and like yeah shower them with things instead of whatever um and not to say that like whatever i know that it's hard and you have to be able to put food in mouths yeah but it's just sad to me that we don't focus as much on that or it's been like almost brainwashed in us that we that that's not a like big focal point for us in that's that's not one of our core values yeah Mm -hmm. that's not we don't prioritize that right that's unfortunate it is um Okay. Their understanding of the primacy of human connectedness reflects a wisdom lost in our current world. Mm -hmm. How ironic that the cultures our modern world has marginalized Mm -hmm. are the very cultures with the wisdom to heal our modern woes. Damn. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the fucking truth? Yep. That's exactly what I mean, though. The people that we say um, that somehow get looked down upon seem to have it all figured out in Mm -hmm. in that sense. Right. Yeah, And I wish instead of looking down on them, we could learn from them Mm -hmm. and take those values and value them ourselves because I think it's important. And I think if you want us to keep going and having children families well that's the thing they're like i just saw something the government wants to give an incentive for millennials to have children it's like why don't you make it so that we can have a one fucking parent household again uh maternity and paternity leave there you go (laughs) that's quite the incentive government isn't it that um let's like they want to give tax breaks yeah health care let's do maternity paternity leave let's make it so that we can survive on a one fucking parent like income yep. again yeah you mm-hmm. want to make it so that we keep having children we don't want another fucking tax break at right. tax time oh yeah income. let's just make it so that like you know there's an incentive to want to have children right and and not fuck them up right and not fuck us up when right. we have them yes 
Because I'll be honest with you, if I had to go back to a nine to five, if this wasn't our job, mm-hmm. which not to say that we don't spend a lot of time doing this because right. we fucking do, yeah. but it does make it so that I am able to stay home more than I would if I was mm-hmm. going to a restaurant job again. If I had to do that, I could tell you right now, I wouldn't have had another kid. Well, there's no and way. And also childcare. Yeah. The cost of childcare. Sometimes Ridiculous. people just work just to pay for childcare. Yeah. So what are we doing? Right. What are we fucking doing? Right absolutely ridiculous honestly Mm -hmm. so um sorry we gave you we gave you like two funny ha-has and then (laughs) sorry and then we got sad (laughs) sorry that's just been really heavy on my mind lately and especially like during the holidays i like i said in the beginning i remember the holidays being very different than they are now and i realize that they're never going to be that way again and it's just because there's been a shift in the world yes and we are feeling the effects of no longer having a village. Yeah. And I guess I guess even saying the phrase I haven't looked it up, but saying the phrase like it takes a village. I I wonder if that's like in a way culturally offensive. Yeah, like insensitive. Mm-hmm. Um if it is, please let us know. Yeah, and we I, apologize for it if it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. What what we're trying to say though is just like I, I mean it is taking from their yeah. That that's a core value of theirs. Yeah. Because I believe that that's where it comes and that's from. that's so fucking annoying then. That yeah. like you're going to see. Oh, also, I said pow at the beginning of the last episode. And um, someone pointed that out to me that that's culturally insensitive. Apologies. I looked it up. And there's what's annoying is in the dictionary. There's two different definitions. One of them being that it's a sacred indigenous ritual. And the other being that it's just a casual get together with friends, but it says that's the informal use of the word. Yeah. And what it should say is it's the appropriated use right. of the word. Yeah. And like, it's, it's frustrating. I'm sure it's frustrating for indigenous people to hear someone who's not indigenous use it incorrectly. Sure. Um, but it's, it's frustrating that there are terms like powwow or like it takes a village. Um, Our tribe, things yes, like that. Yes. That are appropriated and used so often that like it takes us an hour to even think, oh fuck, yeah, maybe. that's not ours, yeah, and we and don't also, even use it, like, <laughs> yeah, we're not, we don't even do what, no one even helps, yeah, yeah, <laughs> we don't even have that, <laughs> yeah. So, well, now I'm, I have to go think about what I've done, honestly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, thanks for hanging out, guys. We hope that helped. I hope that you can recognize, um. Uh, Maybe where the source of some of your anxiety and frustration and loneliness comes from. And um, I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe it's Go to helpful. church or something. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> no. 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 Join a mom know. block. No, there are people on the Fangents page and they've been like play- having game nights and they started a Marco Polo group, which just oh like God, made me so- cry. I wanted to just like sneak in there one time and be like, what's up, fucker? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think I will because you've yeah. seen me on Marco Polo. <laughs> yeah. and I'm Boob not sure. out. <laughs> I'm sure I'm ready for them all to see me yeah. like that. Well, anyway, thanks for hanging out, guys. Yes. Um, We will see you next week. Uh, at our live show at our live show yeah, also and, uh, next week we'll probably have a um an episode a throwback episode um thanks for being understanding and working with us as we kind of shift and find our new homes mm-hmm. so we appreciate you we love you yeah. we will see you next week all right we're out goodbye